Okay, so we're gonna go over independent events in this video. So we say that two events, A and B, are independent if the occurrence of one event does not change the probability that the other event will happen. That is that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, and the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. So this is a pretty like intuitive you know, concept. It's kind of just like what you would think naturally. Like, what does it mean to be independent in just normal language? means to you know, not be affected by other stuff. So in terms of math talk or statistics talk, it means that their probabilities won't be affected by the occurrence of other things happening. So um, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty in, in a simple um, concept as long as you don't overthink it because I've seen that sometimes with the way some problems are worded, students can um, make this much more complicated and harder on themselves. And it's because sometimes they want to just rely on a formula when it's like not really that necessary in the sense where you have to like define everything formally like this. Anyways, let's go through an example because it's always the best way to understand this stuff. Okay, so here we have, uh, we're talking about finger length and we want to see if there's, is there a relationship between gender and finger length? So to find out, we use the random sampler at the United States Census at School website to randomly select 452 U.S. high school students complete a survey. A two-way table shows the gender of each student and which finger was longer on their left hand, index finger or ring finger. So here we have the female students. 78 of them had a longer index finger. 82 of them had a longer ring finger. 52 of them had the same length fingers. For males, 45 of them had a longer index finger. 152 had a longer ring finger. And 43 of them had the same length finger. So the problem is, are the events female and a longer ring finger independent? Justify your answer. Okay, so another way to think about independence is just think about like asking yourself, is there a relationship between these two things? Um, we will learn in, a, um, in another chapter um, dealing with um, what's called like correlation. If you haven't maybe covered that chapter yet, you might have it depending on what course you're, and depending on how your class is structured. But um. Think of like, you know, independence in the same sense as if are two things related. So in this case, you want to see is there a relationship between um, being a female and a lot having a longer ring finger. So is there a relationship between gender and um, which finger is longer. So we essentially want to see does the probability of having a longer ring finger change if you're told that the student is a female or this um that's really the way you want to look at it so essentially you want to figure out what the probability of having a longer ring finger is in you know just in general no conditions just the probability of having a longer ring finger and then we want to compare it what's the probability of having a longer ring finger given that you're a female. So if these two probabilities are the same, then we can say they're independent. If they're not the same, if they're different, then we could say that they're not independent. So let's first figure out what the probability of having a longer ring finger is just in general. So again, we don't care about gender. There's no condition here. We just look at the probability of having a longer ring finger. So it's the, the total. 234 and divided by 452. So 234 by 452. And we'll get about 0.518, we'll say. Okay, so now let's see what's the probability of having a longer ring finger given that you're a female. So we only care about the females now. We don't care about these guys. So we now look at just this column and look at what proportion and have a longer ring finger. So we're gonna take the 82 of them, 82 and divided by the total number of females, 212. And we get about Okay, so you can see there's, there's a, about like a 12, 13% difference between 
these two probabilities. So then we can then say that these are non-dependent because it does appear that that your chances of having a longer ring finger changes is much less if you're female than it is just in general. So again, think of it as their relationship between, you know, having a longer ring finger, between your ring finger being longer and your gender. All right, so here's the answers we're all written out. Um, remember in statistics, you're gonna have to do a lot of writing, um, or at least more than you're used to um, in normal math classes. So especially, you know, on your AP exam, just make sure you always um, explain your answer um, in a sense where the reader can tell um, that you know what you're doing. So we say that since these two probabilities are not equal, the events are not, the events are non-dependent because if you know that as soon as the female, it makes it less likely that her ring finger is gonna be longer than her index finger.